Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very excited to be posting my interview here with John Esteen. Uh, a couple of you beautiful listeners might know him already. Um, I had him um, on my show where he talked about his 150-year sentence and, um, yeah, his experiences and his awakening and what made him start to fight for his freedom. And then I had another interview with him and Reginald um, Joseph, uh, which was very motivational and inspirational. Um, and today we want to talk a bit uh, more about the prison system and how John is doing now that he's out and about in this uh, crazy world, um, I don't want to imagine how much um, yeah, stress you encounter at times. I was not locked up. I was not away for 20 years. And I have still difficulties to catch up with yeah, the fast paced life that it is. And I feel, I don't know if you agree, John, <laughs> um, evolution, like on an evolutionary, um, like um, if you want to look at evolution, people don't really have evolved. They're not kinder. They're not more compassionate. They're not more patient. Uh, we invented a bunch of electronics since you were gone, um, but people are just as greedy and aggressive and selfish as they were before. Would you agree with that, or did you? Can you see an evolution on a hard level? I I, I agree on both points. Good. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because people change, but the world is like the world is moving fast. And the people change, but their mindset doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I'm saying that because when I came home, when I came home from Angola after doing 20 plus years, I find my old friends and friends of friends have the same uh, observations as I did people are stuck in the same rut that it was 20 years prior. And I found that very amazing. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why, you see, because doing it in prison, I educated myself and went to Bible college, went to horticulture school. I was a mentor, faith-based instructor, I did a lot of things in the 20 years that I was gone. So I, t I used my time wisely. Okay. And I'm home now two years. And a lot of people tell me that I have accomplished what I have accomplished in two years. People haven't did it, did that, that has been free for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is to me, that's, to me, that's very alarming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I feel we can learn from your mindset. And um, ah, it's so tough to put into words, but I feel some people have to go through pain and stress in order to wake up and see how valuable life is and how fast time is running. Um, Now that you've been out for two years, do you feel you're appreciating life on a deeper level? Yes. And I, it was doing time was a valuable lesson to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm home, I can use what I learned while incarcerated. Actually, I learned patience. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. I never jumped into I never jumped into situations when I came home. I wanted a house. I wanted a car. I wanted all these things. I started working immediately to acquire these things. But at the same time, I didn't 
I did not jump on the first opportunities that came my way mm-hmm. because I never felt right about it because I, I did not want to put myself in a, in a situation, a financial situation. Mm-hmm. You see, because I, I, I was in that position before prior to being incarcerated and I had to maintain that. So I had to have a job. I had had um, continued doing. I, I had a lot of worries that I that um that I don't have today because mm-hmm. I never put myself in that position to be forced to work or whatnot. Mm-hmm. You see, now I could take my time and think out what actually I am going to do for myself to provide for myself mm-hmm. and. It is to it's a slow process, but it's a worthy process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. And um, so now that you've been out and you see that people have not really like changed, um, do you feel that they are more and more listening to you and that they can see, okay, John went through some stuff and he has to um, share things with us that he's learned. Um, Just before you said people have to know more about prison and how prison life is and what you learn there and, and the hardship you have to go through. Yes, in prison, I learned that the more that you learn, the better position you'll be in. Mm. So, and when I first got to prison, I was playing sports. I was doing actually, I was doing everything what I, everything other than what I was supposed to be doing, like studying the law. The law got me in prison. And it was the law that's going to get me out of prison. Mm-hmm. When I realized that, I had to learn the law as it pertains to my case, my situation. And it took me like it took me like four years to really dawn on me, figure it out that, look, I have 150 years over my head. And if I don't do anything, this would be my permanent place. Mm-hmm. And like I discussed with you in our prior interviews, is that what woke me up is seeing a guy being buried in mm-hmm. Angola and mm-hmm. feeling his and feeling his pain in, in so to speak, uh, like I'm spiritually speaking here. Yes. Feeling his pain. And I and, and I didn't know this guy. I did not know this guy. But I felt him because of the commonality we have of being incarcerated. Mm-hmm. And knowing and, and putting myself in his shoes, it is it, it was a very emotional for me. Mm-hmm. It brought tears to my eyes. Mm-hmm. And from that point forward, that's when I made the decision, look, I'm going to fight for my freedom. Mm-hmm. If all, on all cause, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sacrifice. I'm going to do this. Nothing coming before me learning my situation as the law pertains to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. So And a long story short, I'm home now because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is it for you, John, when you're encountering situations now, maybe you have in the last two years, where you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You have a choice to react as the old John and you have a choice to react Mm -hmm. as the new John. Do you you remember a couple of situations? That you would like to share. That that. is a, that's a beautiful question because people need to know that, I mean, when you change your life, you're always going to have the opportunity to flash back to the old you Mm -hmm. and you have a decision to make at that point. Yeah. And I thank God first and foremost that he kept me through all these situations There's times that I just want to blow up and just go off on an inmate or even a free folk alike. But my mind, by me learning and 
and by me wanting my freedom, it kept me at it kept me at bay. Mm-hmm. It kept me focused. Yeah. On on, on my goal. Mm-hmm. You see. Mm-hmm. And I and that was very paramount to my freedom. Today, I reacted to situations that would normally bring me out there and make me lose everything. Mm-hmm. So now, as I look back today, I am very thankful. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I chalk it up. I give the credit to God first and foremost because it's, cause when I, I went to Bible college while there, the reason being is because I wanted to get to know who God is for myself. Mm-hmm. Not what somebody tell me. I wanted to pray. I wanted to experience these things because the scriptures say, try me, taste me. I'm sweeter than honey. You'll never, you'll never turn back. Mm-hmm. And that was a promise. And I wanted, and I wanted to hold Jesus, which is the word to that promise. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to, and, and as a result of that, my decision is to never turn my back on God for the rest of my, my life. Because mm-hmm. God, it's the word of God that opened my mind to things. Because I was, other than that, I was tunnel vision. Yeah. I seen things the way I wanted to see it. And nobody can tell me no different. Yeah. Now I'm patient. I listen. And I learn. Like my daddy told me. He said, if you're always talking, how are you going to learn anything? Yeah, yeah. How are you going to hear? <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So you have those situations where you have a choice, but you have found God, you have found your faith that keeps you on track. So it is not only to be a good person because you have to, because you are on parole. Like you're not doing it for the government to be good. You do not for yourself and for God. And that's your motivation. Exactly. Because otherwise, I think exactly. that it, wouldn't, it wouldn't, like if it was for the government and to be a good and perfect person all the time, it wouldn't be sustainable. You wouldn't, you, it'd be hard to be happy because you found that peace inside of you and you want to keep that peace. It's motivation from the inside. Did I understand that right? Exactly. Exactly. Because if I don't do it, if I'm not doing something for me, if it's not in my heart to do, yeah. eventually I w- that would end. You see? Okay. That yeah. good behavior you will be over with. That that I can flash out at any time. I'll be like a, a walking time bomb. Exactly, yes. But since I'm so so since I'm doing it from my heart, mm-hmm. I have more sustainability. Yeah. Like you just mentioned. That's so beautiful. Now, you have your nonprofit organization called Second Wind, where you help people who mm-hmm. come out of prison to reintegrate into society. Um, how do you approach them? Um, which tools do you give them in order to be out there in freedom and not being scared to? having to go back to prison because of um yeah committing another crime. well the main thing is right lord see that's the whole thing of my nonprofit organization is the law the recidivism rate and that yeah. is help not let them return back to prison mm-hmm. and they have to know that you can do anything to put your mind to do you have to focus Find out what that thing is that drives you, that makes you good, that gives you hope. And hold on to that and mm-hmm. achieve that to the bitter end. And you shall. I'm a prime example of that. Look at me. I, I, look at me because I experienced that. Mm-hmm. First experience was coming home. Not... I couldn't find one person that understood my case and agreed with me that I was going to win in the Louisiana Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. 
I got denied the first time in Louisiana Supreme Court. But in that dissent, I received from the judge, one of the chief justice, gave me the ammunition, the understanding to go forward and know that I'm going to win the next time around. Mm -hmm. It was the language in there. And I used that language Mm -hmm. for my benefit. And I had a lot of confidence confidence in within myself with this. I, I believe God opened my mind because my prayer was that God give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in my situation mm-hmm. that may overcome. Mm-hmm. And I think at this at this moment, He gave me that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I prayed for all those years. <laughs> and um, I thank God for it because it's nobody else could see it. That's why I'm that's why I'm mentioning this. Mm-hmm. Nobody. So I convinced one inmate counsel to help me structure this thing. Mm-hmm. Convinced one. Like he's told me. He said, man, you came at me so many times and tried to explain. You see, you had so much compassion. I had to help you. You see? Yeah. That's how strongly I believe that I was going to win this case. And as a result of that, 50 plus people, inmates, were released because of my case. They called my case the Esteen case, and it set precedence of law. Are you still in contact with those people? Not all. I don't know all of them. I don't know all these people that I just know a few of them that was with, that was in the same facility I was in. I would yeah. love to know all these people. And there's still people getting out today on the Esteen case. It's like God took my name and using it for freedom when it once before was for bondage. Yeah. God took my a name that my name that was uh, drugged through the dirt and now being praised in a sense yeah for good yeah and only god can yeah. do that <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and you're living up to your purpose and you're helping others now and yeah it's just incredible yeah. very beautiful What else is there that you you. feel people need to know about the prison system or about people who come out of jail? I feel there's still a lot of fear and harsh judgment when it comes to ex-cons. And um, how do you feel? can Can we make people believe that there is second chances? People change. People can do good if they've done bad in the past. That's not them. They can, they can be a different person in the, in the future. How can we? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what changed me. It was a loving support of my family and friends. Mm-hmm. To sum it up, love of changes everything. Mm-hmm. So when you. So when you're helping people, it's natural for them to be to show or be appreciative of what you've done for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beginning of changing one's heart. So a man's heart has to change. We can't change it. Mm -hmm. He has to make the initial steps to change his own heart. And God does the miraculous thing in this. He does it. He completes it. Like they have the scripture say, like one guy comes along and sows the seed and another one comes and water it. And God gives the increase. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful of how we deal with people because we don't want to do things that would take it out of God's hands. Mm Mm-hmm. So we ought to be the example. So God put us here not to be alone, to be come together, Mm -hmm. to help one another. Mm -hmm. You see? And of course, the people that you're helping must also do their part. Mm -hmm. Because that's make it all work. Because faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. You can believe all you want on something. You can have an idea 
if we don't act upon it, it just remains an idea. Yeah. That's what they need to understand. Once they understand that principle and they believe in themselves, they're not going back to prison because they have something bigger that they're looking towards than prison. Mm-hmm. You got to find something bigger than prison. Mm-hmm. Bigger than that act that you're about to commit. You got to find something bigger than that. If you, you can't find nothing bigger than that, then nine out of ten times you're going to repeat. you be a repeat offender. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is what your organization is doing. For people who maybe don't have a loving family, they are being received by you guys and they are being helped to find a mission where they can put their mind and their heart into it in order to not go back to prison, not back to the old life. Financially speaking, what our ultimate purpose is, we are not doing. So what I did do, what I launched was for senior citizens, disabled vets, single parent homes, and people of the like, we we launched a free lawn service care, lawn care service. Yeah. So we go around, that would take a burden off a lot of these people. You mm-hmm. see, we're trying to help. We're trying to show that we are for real. Mm-hmm. We want to help people. We need the donations so we can get buildings, get the Get the transportation, get the buses for transportation, bringing guys to and f- to and from their appointments, um, jobs if if that's the case. Um, getting uh, hiring a psychiatrist to deal with these guys mentally. Mm-hmm. You see, these things need to be done because Louisiana, from last time I checked, we're leading the nation in um, mental health, and we don't have and we had less facilities. <sighs> So, I mean, I think that's a need there. Yeah. I need people to come along and help. Yeah. 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 And you don't have to be a psychologist to help. You can just be a human being who offers. That's right. You know, an ear, like listen to and to have compassion and to maybe help out finding a mission. Because we all have. Exactly. Because we can't do it alone. No. We can't do it alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, this yeah. is very, very. So we have psychiatrists, but we need other people, surrounding people, to also uh, contribute in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. Totally. So, what is your plan? Can you share with, with uh, our listeners here? What is your plan with your podcast? I'm very excited about your podcast here. Um, what is your okay? <laughs> All right. All right. The, the title of my podcast, which me and you we discussed that, but I'm on leaving it alone, leaving it there because a lot of people want it, you know. But we'll see what the future holds for that. Yeah, anyway, out of bondage and into success podcast. Uh, I came up with the idea. It's like it was guy sent. It was different wording at the time, but somebody put it in the right perspective for me, helped me out, and I really liked it because of my lifestyle. I was in bondage, mm-hmm. not only physical bondage, but I was in a mental bondage. Mm-hmm. And I come out of that bondage doing positive things, and I'm reaping the benefits of it now. Mm-hmm. And if I can do it, anybody else can do it. Yeah, that's the whole purpose of my podcast is to for the listeners to listen to my podcast and hear something that they might be going through at the time could release them from that bondage, whatever they bondages are. Yeah, it can be like an addiction. It can be mentally. It can be just them living a boring life and not having a mission. Right. And you can be there and like wake people up and exactly. make people aware and let people share their story. That is so beautiful. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And then it's helping that person, that person I'm interviewing is helping them too. It's therapeutic. 
totally. it's very therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know, we need people need to get things off their chest. Yeah. They're carrying these burdens around that they don't need to be carrying around. But yeah. you know, the word of God. When I learned the word of God, it said my burdens are light. Come to me. And I understand I get it now. I get it. And that's what I do. And guess what? Every time I do it, I feel a whole lot better. I can sleep at night and God opened doors for me. I can't beat that. I'm staying with it. The greeting worked for me. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> oh, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Yeah, this is a, a beautiful mission. And this is where you put your full heart and drive into, right? Um, you also have children. You also have a wife. And, and you have that beautiful network um, around you. How can people reach you? People who might not have that supportive system, can they reach you on Facebook, on Instagram, um, through your organization? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a website. I have a website for my own nonprofit organization. Yeah. Um, which is e and e second win dot com. Yeah. They can go on that site and contact me through that. Yeah. Beautiful. That is very, very I'll be good. Glad, I'll be glad for people to contact me. I would love to talk to them. But like I say, communication rules the nation. Totally. And we can, together, we can do it. Totally. And you don't have to have a degree as a psychologist to help other people. Sometimes it's, it's no, good it's that me. they know that you went through difficult situations and you overcame mm -hmm. hardship. And now you can yeah. listen to others and have empathy and compassion, right? Exactly, exactly. Because I've been there, done that. And and that makes you an expert in your in that area yeah. of your experience. Yeah. You see, you, you went through things, you figured things, you was wrong on certain things, and you had to figure that out. Once you, you had to go to the next thing, and before you know it, you, you got it. And yeah. that, would, and what you figured out, people don't have to go what you went through to figure it out because you have the answer. You have the solution for them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, and that was make it a beautiful thing. But all we need, need, need people just to listen. If they listen and understand, with understanding, you got to listen with understanding. Mm -hmm. If you're just listening, it's going through one ear out the other. You yeah. have to listen intently with understanding and try to understand what, what position the speaker is coming from And try to relate to it. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing these things and while you're listening, you're going to miss the whole point. And yeah. it's not going to be life changing for you. Yeah. Because words changes people's lives. It's the power of the word. Like the Bible again say, you know, it's the, the tongue is the, it's the power of life and death. Mm -hmm. Within the tongue. It's the power of life and death. So it's, how, it's what you're speaking into your life. Mm -hmm. And what you hear and what you're taking in from other people. So you got to, and that's, you know, I don't want to ramble on, but I just want to say this. Yeah. Take, when you, when you doing what's right, when speak, somebody speak to you, life to you, you're going, you're going, you're going to receive that because you, you was waiting on, on it. See, because you was living and trying to do what's right. So you're always going to gravitate to what you trying to do. Good or bad. Mm -hmm. So I pray that it's good because you're in, you're in, the result is going to be good. It just That's just the principle. Yeah. That you have to experience on your own. You cannot, you can listen, but then you also have to act upon it, like you said earlier, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You got to put it when you believe in something, when you something that you want to do, some idea you have or somebody told you something that pricked some idea in your own mind. Act upon it. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in that idea that you have and just do it. Because if you don't do it, you never know what you can accomplish in life. You never know. You never come to that point because you never put the effort towards it. You have to go and do it. No matter if you fail or not, don't worry about that part of it. Because yeah. when you values, you learn how to be victorious. It's yeah. just a process. It's life. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, that's a such a powerful message. And if your intentions are good, you don't need to fear, right? You don't need to fear if it's Oof. being received no, well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If exactly. You, if you're intent- no matter what happened when you're doing, yeah. Excuse no. me. No, no, you say. No matter what the results are when you have when you do something with a good intent, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. because you can get back up on that bicycle that you fell off of and keep on going. Yeah, and eventually. You will get what you're seeking. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, very, very good, John. Is there any last closing words that would you like to add here for people to really know about, yeah, prison life and life after and life in general? Um, yes. Um, prison. I see that it's no different than those who are free in society who put themselves in their own prisons. Yes. Okay? Yes. It's no different. The only thing different is that you're free. You can do something about it or you can go to get better help. In, in, in the physical bondage, you're limited. Your resources are limited. That's what I'm talking about. When, you, when you're free, thank God that I am now, here in society, now my resources are bigger. Mm-hmm. I have a choice to do, to seek help from various sources mm-hmm. versus me being in prison. So therefore, I'm, the people that's in society right now that's thinking about doing something wrong or going through something, seek out help. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to talk to somebody about your situation. Find somebody that you can trust. There's one person that I know that you can trust mm-hmm. to talk to talk to that person. Yeah. And nine out of ten times you will get some type of type of satisfaction out of that. And if that if you don't get to what you deserve out of that, well let's keep seeking. Mm-hmm. As the Bible says, Jesus telling you, you look, you knock, and, and you seek, and you shall find. And the door shall be open unto you. So just keep going. Keep knocking at that door. Seeking for what, you, what you're looking for. And eventually, you would get there. Mm-hmm. That's my word for you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. There's also like another thing I've heard is that God helps those who help themselves. Right? You have to be mm-hmm. active, like you just said. You have to go and seek help. Go and right. ask questions. Because you will be helped. You have to believe mm-hmm. that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's, you know, it's like me. I received help with my situation, my court, and while I was in prison, fighting my case. I received help because people saw me working so hard. Yeah. But by me not knowing the law, like MA counsels, they, that's the thing they do every day. And, and they saw me, they see me going there, knocking down that door every day, trying to learn. I'm asking them questions. I'm, I'm trying to find out mm-hmm. certain different things. And some of them are broke because, it, you know, because a lot of them, they see, this, they see it all over and over again. People will initially start, but they'll, they'll fade out. Mm-hmm. So they don't, so a lot of people don't want to help you because they feel like you like the rest. But just keep doing it. Keep on going forward because eventually they're going to find that one person it's going to see you and going to feel you and it's going to help you. Yes. And, there you and there you have it. Yeah. So beautiful, John. Thank you so, so much for your time today and for yeah, sharing your wisdom with us. Um, it's deeply inspiring and so motivating. And you don't have to um, be a person who was in jail to understand and to relate because we're all sometimes imprisoned in our minds or in a situation we don't want to be in so what you <laughs> exactly. see here relates to everybody and i'm very excited everybody. to post this episode thank you so so much john you're welcome <laughs>